In this video, we're going to show you how to make a double-sided circuit board using a Raven. First step, build a jig to hold your circuit board. Just define a region the size of the circuit board. Set up your wedge pockets so that you've got at least 0.1 inset on those. That's to make sure that you can handle the variance of the circuit boards. And always remember to put your hole in the corner. That's where you're going to be locating for your manual jigging. Next, export the circuit board from your CAD package in DXF format. I'm going to go ahead and bring that in. First thing is close all of the figures. And this is actually the back side of the board. Many CAD packages will output it looking from the front. So we actually want to mirror that so that it works when we cut it from the back side. We go to board. This is actually the size of that circuit board will be shown here. The margin, in this case, we're going to set this to be a quarter of an inch. You can set this to other variables, but you'll see in a little bit why we set this one to a quarter of an inch. Go ahead and apply the board and hit finish. Now it's going to come up and give you the option of, you know, setting it for an ABC machine or a Raven. If it's for a Raven, you've got the ability to set the resolution. Most circuit boards you're going to be wanting to work around 512. If it is a very thin trace, very high detailed one, you may want to go all the way to 1024. That's going to give you the best results, but it is going to take longer to work. In this case, I'm just doing 512 on this, and we go ahead and import that in. And for right now, we're going to go ahead and turn off all of our tags just to minimize things, make things easier to see right now. Now we want to go ahead and grab all of the traces in this board so that we can assign a bit to it. Probably the easiest way to do that is to go ahead and select pretty much everything that you can grab in there. Then while holding the control key, we're going to go ahead and use the rectangular selection, which will grab anything that's fully within it. So we can use that to get just the elements we want and drop those out. And we're just holding the control key down as we draw the rectangle. When you release the uh, rectangle, you can see what you have left. Okay, now we have all of the traces. Let's just go ahead and hit group. That's going to stick those all in a group. Makes it easier for us to work with and grab hold of them in the future. Now we're just going to assign a bit to those. What I've found is that V bits actually work the best. I generally use a 30 or a 60 degree. In this case, it's fairly fine traces, so I'm going to be using a 30 degree. You do need to use a high grade bit. Uh, the higher the grade, typically the lower the run out. And we're only going to be going five thousandths of an inch deep. Now, every bit has a certain amount of run out. So we're going to inset, not just for the taper of the bit, but also give it just a little bit more, just to make sure that we're going to be on the outside of the line. Remember, setting a negative inset puts it to the outside of the path. Uh, we'll go ahead and say OK. Now, of course, to be able to see that here, we're going to have to hit the preview full resolution. We are dealing with a high resolution board. But if we zoom in, you can see that the path we've assigned is outside of the traces there. So we can take just a quick sanity check on that and make sure that everything looks reasonable and that should make a good pass. Now the last thing we're going to do on the back side of the board is to define our locating hole. In this case, we're going to actually make it a locating slot. So we're just going to draw a line. The length of the line doesn't really matter. We do want to make sure that it's set vertical in this case. And we'll go ahead and turn our dimensions back on so you can see this. We're going to go ahead and attach this 0.125 and 0.125. 
and then we're going to assign a bit to this. In this case, I'm just going to go ahead and put a 16th of an inch uh, bit on it. It's a nice small bit so I can get a high resolution accuracy out of it, but not so small that I'm going to risk breaking it. And I'm just going to tell it to go through the board, about 60 thousandths is around the thickness of this board. But I'm going to make it a very small pass. The reason I'm going to do that is because I want this to be very gentle. I don't want this to torque the board in any way. 16th of an inch bit could easily cut all the way through this. But it has the possibility of torquing it, grabbing it, moving that board a little bit, which is not going to be good if we're using this to locate off of. Now we're going to import the front face of the circuit board. When you get this, it's usually because there's some text or other information that's not really needed. Again, up, close all of the sections. This is the front, so the orientation is correct. We go to the board. The working area shows us the actual size of the uh, highlighted elements in the board. In this case, we're going to set the margin to an eighth of an inch. And this is how we're going to be lining up for our clip. Sign the board, click finish. Again, we're going to set this one to 512 on our resolution. Now we have our front face. I'll go ahead and go through and assign the bits to all of the geometry here. And then we'll talk about setting up the drill bits. Okay, we have our pass defined. Now we need to go ahead and set up our drills. Now there's a couple of ways to do a drill. You could set up by grabbing this geometry right here and applying a pocket region with a very small end mill. We're actually not going to do it that way though. We're going to use a drill bit. So we're just going to go ahead and set up a drill by, uh, and I actually defined some drills for this particular project. And let's just go ahead and configure that bit just so you can see how drills work. You set the major diameter. You need to set a pass depth that is reasonable. If this is too small, it will literally peck its way down. Now, if you're cutting into metal, sometimes that's what you want. We don't want that on a circuit board. And you set your plunge rate on that. The other thing to note is anytime you're setting a bit up like this, make sure you set it expanded. Normal is for a carve right bit, one where we know what the length of it is and we can shorten our search range. Expanded means it's going to search the entire way down for that electrical contact. You won't break a bit. The project will proceed normally. Let's go ahead and cancel out of that and just go ahead and grab that bit. Now we're going to set the diameter to be the same diameter as the bit. That means it'll just plunge straight on through. Okay. All right. Now I know the spacing of these connectors. So I'm just going to go ahead and use copy array to lay out an array of this. So I'm going to tell it to make one and it's 0.1 spacing on that connector. And you'll see two holes pop up here. It's always the original plus the count. So vertically there are 12 here. So we're going to tell it to go to 11 and oops, 0.1. And you can see you get a representation of that. This is very small, so it's not very big over here. Go ahead and hit OK. And we'll see that array appears. We can just actually just move this into position and zoom in a little bit more and just line that up using those indicators. And for this purpose, that's actually going to be more than accurate enough. If you want to see it better, you can go ahead and click on the give you full resolution and you'll see that here. We'll go ahead and proceed to do that with all of the drills here. And then we're going to assign a cutout to the outer region. We're going to go ahead and give this a 16th inch bit here. And of course, I'm going to flip the cut out to the outside there. And 
we're going to set a pass step. Now, just like I did with my locating hole, I don't want to rock this uh, board around. It would be very annoying to finish this and then pop it out because we were cutting fast through this. So we're just gonna let it take multiple passes. It literally only adds seconds to the project and it's just so little stress on the board. We're guaranteed that it's going to not move it around and we'll get the finished product out very well. Go ahead and hit accept and we'll finish signing these holes and go cut this. All right, take your double-sided material and put it in the jig, insert your wedges, make sure that they're in good and tight, and you're ready to cut. With the back side cut out, the easiest way to remove the wedges is just put your T-handled Allen wrench in and rotate. I'll just pop them out and lift the board out at the same time. Go ahead and flip it over. So we're going to go ahead and move the board into position. We always want to go beyond the slot. And then we're just going to slowly tap ourselves in. Don't put your bit too far down or you might drag it and snap it. I'm just a little bit too far, so I'm going to go ahead and back up again, past it. All right, now we're in it. So we do a slot so that we can just concentrate on getting X first, and then all we have to do is just slide over to the edge of the slot, and we're there. the finished board. All that's left is to tin it and solder the components on.